Welcome to Be The Wellness Podcast, where we help you master your body, mind, and the experience of life through insightful conversation, interviews with experts and thought leaders, all with a side of marital banter and some good old-fashioned humor. Yes, we are your hosts, Adam and Vanessa Lambert, and we're committed to helping you live life fully expressed physically, mentally, and experientially. Sit back, grab a cup of coffee, and join the conversation. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Be The Wellness Podcast. We are your hosts, Adam and Vanessa Lambert, and we are so pumped about this podcast. <laughs> we are. <laughs> we super are pumped. super pumped. <laughs> it was a good one. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah. It came with a whole set of acro yoga. Yes. Acro. Mm-hmm. Came with some preamble. Some preamble. <laughs> some physical preamble. <laughs> Is that acro yoga? What, what do you call that? The, the picture yoga. that we took. Yeah. That's acro yoga as well? Yes. That's like acro Instagram? Yes. Acro yeah. Instagram. So if you check out our Instagram, along with this podcast, we will be showing some of the acro yoga that we were doing with our guest, Aaron Alexander of the Align Method today. And uh, yeah, it was pretty fun. Like he actually showed up and... Aaron was like, hey, how's it going? He came to our place in Venice and we did it in person because he lives locally too. And I kind of turned my head funny and I was like, well, my neck's kind of messed up. So that's unfortunate. And he's like, well, what's going on? And I was like, well, I slept weird. Uh." Anyway, within about like 30 seconds of him walking in the house, he's got me upside down. You know, he's like stretching me and uh, he's holding like his feet are in my hips, kind of in like the airplane airplane. style, but he's pulling my shoulders and moving my neck. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And we're laughing about my boobs almost popping out. And, you know, (laughs) it was like jumping right in. So, yeah, it was it was pretty funny, but um, it actually did make a huge difference because, you know, we rarely go upside down, to be fair. Yeah. Well, especially suspended. You know, it's like when you do go upside down, it's usually on your hands. Right. So there's compression in your shoulders and your thoracic spine and all that. Right. So to be flown upside down, you know, essentially, I don't know, in traction, for lack of a better term, from the hips down is a pretty awesome. Yeah, totally. Well, hips up, H- hips I up, <laughs> but you're upside down. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, you <laughs> Whatever. Get you, get, you get the picture. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to hop into that podcast soon with Aaron, but first we want to talk about our up, our very next event that's coming up, which is Peru. And, you know, I was just writing an article about this that, you know, it's so easy in the end of the year and the beginning of the new year to really be falling into that end of the year slump or funk or holiday tendency towards letting go of your <laughs> we have a lot of dogs in the house right now if you can't hear <laughs> uh, the jingle bells of puppies um of shaking anyway we um we've <laughs> I lost my brain of thoughts <laughs> Uh, we have a lot of dogs in the house, if you guys cannot uh, tell. There's lots of jingle bells of the collars and such. But anyway, what we're trying to say here is that at the end of the year, it's really easy to let go of your ambition towards your health and fitness goals. And putting something like Peru on the map, which is happening in just about four months, is such a good way to keep yourself engaged with the process. You know, I just went for a run the other morning and I was thinking, oh, it's kind of gloomy out. I didn't really feel like it. But I thought, you know what? Peru's going to be here before we know it. And we're going to be hiking again. And it's like go time. So all of the excuses and all of the should I, coulda, woulda, whatever. I'll get to it tomorrow. I'll get to it tomorrow. You know, screw it. It's the holiday season. I'm going to have another cookie and stay in bed. We're like, no, (laughs) you don't have time for that. (laughs) Like you got to get moving. And I was like, yes, this is why we do this because it gives gets rid of the excuses and gets you back on track before you even have a time to really get off track. Yeah. A hundred percent. There's just, there's nothing like having something to train for. Yeah. There just yeah, isn't. It, it works. And something that you know is going to be physically enough challenging that like, a, you know, you want to be prepared and you want to be ready. So if you are thinking about coming to Peru with us, grab one of our last few spaces, hop into the training for the adventure of life program. We designed
designed this program specifically for our folks who go to Peru and New Zealand with us because there's a physical component to each of those events and we want you guys to be prepared. So there's a lot of glute work, there's a lot of breath work, there's a lot of cardiovascular conditioning and it's getting you prepared for feeling really good on the hikes and such that we do in both of those events. So hop in and you're just in time to get started with that training. And, you know, I can't think of a better way to come, you know, come cruising into the new year with the ambition of having something like a hike to Machu Picchu on your plate. Yeah. That's, you couldn't have said it better. Yeah. That's the deal. (laughs) That's what's up. (laughs) That's what's up. So get in there because it's like Vanessa said, it really is a matter of, you know, uh, can you make the hike if you're not in great shape? Yeah, we, we've built of in ways yeah. of doing that. There's horses. There's ways of yeah. making it happen. You yeah, know yeah, I mean? yeah. Will you enjoy it a lot more if you're physically capable and, it, and you're not just beat at the end of every day? 100%. Yeah. You know, and this is one of the things about life is as you get beat down and bogged down and physically tired, you kind of put the blinders on. Yes. You know, you're just one foot in front of the other and you're looking and, and everybody's experienced this to some degree, you know, and, and there's... It's uh, never been more true than on a a hike at elevation, you know, and if you want to be looking at the things around you and really enjoying it, you've got to have some headroom, you know, you've got to have the endurance and and the strength to do it so that you can, you know use some part of your mind to pay attention to all the beauty around you instead of just, you know, the trail in front. So absolutely. And for those of you who are like, oh my gosh, even with training, I'm not ready for that. You are ready for this because this year, the trail that Adam and I are leading is the Laris Trek. And what's so cool about this option and the reason that we did it was there are different levels of hiking available every day. So you get to choose literally your own adventure and your own level each day. So you don't have to feel worried that like if you show up, you know, you're going to be like, oh no, if I'm, if you're not feeling as great one day or you want to take it easier one day, you can actually do that. So between the training And again, your ability to kind of modulate what you're going to do on the day-to-day basis, this is a chance to really see Peru in such a magical, amazing, you know, be the wellness way that if Peru is on your bucket list, now is your time. We are not doing Peru for at least a couple years. We have no plans to do it in the near future. So this is your year to do it. Yeah. hundred percent. Cool. hundred. Hunna, Hunna. Hunna. All right. So let's get back to Aaron Alexander. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, we met Aaron. We actually met Aaron at Paleo FX. Yeah. A couple years ago. A couple years ago. Throwing a spear. Yes. <laughs> we were just... throwing spears together. Right. <laughs> yeah. But we're obviously both local Los Angeles and we, you know, kind of had been circling, orbiting, if you will, in each other's environments. So we knew about Aaron. Obviously, he knew who we were and we were excited to finally get him on the show to promote his new book, The Align Method. Yes. And, you know, Aaron is so in alignment. <laughs> which is one of our favorite words, yeah. as you all know, <laughs> with what we preach here yeah. at Be The Wellness. He, you know, he really is about all of the day-to-day habits that create the optimal strong body, sharper mind, stress-proof life, all of those things mm-hmm. that we talk about here at Be The Wellness. So it couldn't be a better fit. And, you know, he really is taking this and he walks the talk. He he really does what he, you know, what he talks about, what he preaches, what he coaches others. And you can see, you know, he's got amazing flexibility and strength and resiliency and just a great attitude and, you know, optimism. And it really shows in who he is and how he yeah. like emotes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's an emoter. He's, he's a, motor, a super yeah. interesting dude. And I think uh, this, this podcast is a crack up. There's a lot of ground that we cover and there's a whole myriad of, of topics, you know, and, and all of it, I think really does point to this idea of alignment and not just like physical alignment in your life, but having, God, what's the, I don't even know the right way to look at it, but just like having everything so squared in your life that your life is just generally more entertaining and interesting. Yes. And I think that's something that I really got out of this, out of this podcast was like, yeah, man, all of this stuff is connected. You know, we could be talking about the proper spinal alignment and we can be talking about, you know, a relationship that you have with a friend or a loved one. And you could be talking about at places that you go and adventure and it all comes around to this amalgamation of living an interesting and productive and ultimately like enjoyable and fun life, you know? And so we go on and on about this in the next 
hour and a half or so, like, you know, but it's, <laughs> it's super entertaining. I really hope you guys get something out of it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we are so excited to welcome Aaron to the podcast and let's do it. Here's Aaron. What is this animal's name? This is Penelope. Penelope. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Are we what live? A special creature. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're in. Perfect. Yeah. Drop it in. <laughs> got Penelope in hand. Yeah. yeah. Ready to go. Yeah. You've got Next literally your right hand, Penelope. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, good. it's like it's almost sorcerer's like a mouse. stone. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. You're, what is that a reference to? Is that Harry Potter? Sorcerer's, sorcerer's Stone? Sorcerer's Did I just stone? make that up? Lord um, of the Rings? It's got to be Lord of the Rings. What else could it be? No. Isn't that what the. Isn't that what Excalibur was stuck in? Is that what the that was? Oh, stone? yeah. Yeah. Or was that just the sword in the stone? And oh, so I don't sounds, know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm terrible. So Any many fables. Yeah, yeah, I'm the worst. <laughs> Seriously, let's, especially let's the focus on Penelope. So welcome stuff. to the Goodbye. podcast. Thank you. By the way, thanks for doing it. Long overdue. <laughs> so yeah. overdue. In. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we're really excited that we get you in this particular moment because obviously you have some big news coming out. And uh, I'm pregnant. I don't want to tell everybody that you're pregnant. First but trimester. <laughs> yeah, yes. it's been a secret. You are getting ready to give birth to a book baby. Yeah. And I want to get to that. But first, let's just wind the clock back a little bit and mm. talk about Aaron Alexander as a person. All right. Yeah. Well, let's go deep. <laughs> what does that look like? Should we go back to my burlesque dancing days well, or where do you want to start? Yeah, you've, you've you know, hinted around a few previous careers. So <laughs> I was joking about the, the uh, what was it? Did I say porn? You said porn, I was joking yeah. about that. I was a burlesque dancer for you a little were? while, though. That wasn't my yeah. primary profession, but it was something that was fun to it's do. Just a side yeah. hustle. So I did like a combination of like acrobatic yoga flipping girls around while uh-huh. they took their clothes off and I like unbuttoned my jeans. That sounds like a terrible job. <laughs> <It> is- <laughs> so, I mean, how do you, so, okay, so what's how do you find that job? Yeah, that. exactly. You're like, what's the deal? Is that like a Craigslist thing? Or yeah. you know somebody? No, I was just, I was doing bachata dance at the time uh-huh. and we were at this, as we were practicing bachata, there was like another group coming in to do burlesque mm. and I'm just into weird shit and so I'm like, like, oh, I want to, you know, I just want to do anything that's yeah. improvisational or strange. I'm like, hey, I'll take a shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. And so yeah. I, I just need to know, like, where did you have to quit that job? Were you fired? Like, <laughs> I came to L.A. actually. Okay. Oh, that okay. wasn't in L.A. I that was, was in Bend, Oregon of all Whoa. places. So we did like shows in Portland and, and ran it. It wasn't my career. I was, right, doing, right, you know, right. I was doing rolfing and yeah, had yeah, like a clinic in Oregon, all that stuff. Um, but on my my side gig, my side hustle was uh, picking up naked chicks <laughs> yeah. in Portland. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Which, I mean, I wasn't naked, but you did actually pick me up pretty quickly after oh, you came point. in the door. Yeah, it was yeah. kind of like that. So, so it translates yeah. into your yeah. current career pretty yeah. well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Full yeah. circle. It's an extended handshake. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, cool. you said you're into weird shit. Did this, when did this occur? Have you always been that way? Or was there a moment like in, I don't know, pre-pubescence where you're like, all right, the fork in the road is here and I'm going weird. Like, mm. have you... <laughs> What's, I what think psychedelics that? have been impactful. Yeah, probably. Like I, I think that most of us, like the the to use like Jamie Wheels language, like the the pale of normalcy, mm-hmm. um, is just so tiring and boring mm. and oftentimes skewed in a direction that's more veered towards like statistically, you could look at like the modernity is kind of going towards like anxiety and mm-hmm. depression and obesity and diabetes and like all of these things are like yeah. well they keep on going up even as we get more technology around health and wellness what's going on right um and i think in large part there's a lot of repression and shame and mm. uh you know so i'm i'm interested in exploring anything that kind of like exposes some of those those weird vulnerable parts weird actually the the original meaning of weird is uh to be in control of one's fate mm. huh. it's an old i think it's like an old english word yeah. weird weird mm. or something like that so it's actually is, is that would describe that's, someone that's doing their own thing yeah and, yeah and funny that that's turned into you know what what it is now like that guy's weird you know, and you're like, and he, and now actually, you're like, no, man, he's really people weird. Are he afraid weird. People are afraid of change. You know, you want to be yeah. accepted by your tribe. That's like the worst thing is if mm. you were to be outcasted yeah. in the woods mm-hmm. by yourself. Yeah. And so there's this interesting slippery territory where it's like, okay, like I'm, I'm a part of the tribe enough to be protected and connected, but I don't want to just become like another sheep. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. we're all marching ourselves off of this cliff, potentially depending upon, you know, what direction we're marching. Maybe we're marching ourselves in a great direction. Right. Um, in the case of, <laughs> of like Western culture, 
I'm not, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, questioning of the direction yeah. that we're marching. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so there's a combination of you don't want to potentially be so weird mm-hmm. yeah. that people are like, okay, like crucify him, like right. you get rid of yeah. him. Right. Um, but you don't want to also be just so right in the middle of the pack. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's finding that kind of sweet spot on the border to push just enough that people will respond, but not so much that people will outcast. Yeah. Yeah, hmm. absolutely. And if they do outcast, no, no, fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the nice you, thing about yeah, like yeah, the yeah. modern travel, right? It's like, you can easily find another tribe of people. And you're like, yeah, okay. You guys true. don't work. You're yeah, one plane right good away. That way. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. If you're a freak, you will be found. There's no <laughs> freak. You will find your freak tribe. The, yeah. the freak true. flag true. thing is a yeah. real thing. Yeah. 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 So you mentioned psychedelics and I'm curious if you would just talk about maybe your very first experience with them oh wow um i don't even know i got into like like um cigarettes and alcohol and those aren't psychedelics at all but like substances in general when i was like young i was mm-hmm. like t- like 12 or 13 because i had an yeah. older brother that was 16 mm-hmm. and so i was like i was just right on his coattails mm-hmm. right. all the time from like a weird young age i used to like pick up cigarette butts from the mall mm-hmm. and like fill up a, a pack like a <laughs> yeah. little canister because yeah. i couldn't buy them right um it's disgusting it's yeah. really yeah. disgusting yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we like experimented with anything we get our hands on from like yeah. 13 14 years old or something like that mm-hmm. um and you but don't the, remember what your first psychedelic was? I'm like? trying to think of what like the initial. It's gotta be mushrooms. I think it was mushrooms. I mean, we we tripped on Robitussin too. Oh yeah, oh, that was, wow. I've yeah. never I tried that. I don't that, know which came before yeah. which came before yeah. what uh-huh. Robo tripping. Yeah, Robo tripping. That's not yeah. that. That's not a good idea. Yeah, yeah. no, mm-hmm. it's not recommended. Yeah, no. that's one you want to put on the the <laughs> yeah. do not disturb list. Yeah. <laughs> but one of the inter- more momentous experiences I had of like really like like oh we're tripping mm-hmm. um that was a a like bad in quotations trip which that's like i don't think there's any such thing as a bad trip per se i think it's just a, a you're going into trip. territories yeah. you're maybe not accustomed <laughs> to or um you're having a panic response to you know mm-hmm. like losing this idea that you had of yourself mm-hmm. and you're all of a sudden panicking to try to grab it back. Yeah. Um which that's a you know that's a great experience to get exposed to that. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah terrible experience where we were driving in this car but my buddy had uh this old beat up toyota corolla and you know the rims are falling off and it's you know we're, when we're driving lancaster pennsylvania mm-hmm. and we're all like these shrooms we're all together and my buddy he dealt with like depression and all sorts of mm-hmm. stuff mm-hmm. i'm like probably 15 years old at this point mm-hmm. um and i just th- i think that was the beginning of like understanding empathy and like really tapping into this kid's depression Mm. um, while it's gray and cloudy and all this Mm. stuff. And that just like put me into like this deep, dark, terrified place. I remember hiding underneath my, my uh, blankets in my bed, Mm -hmm. you know, just trying to pretend it's not happening and trying to pretend I'm like, I'm tired, you know, (laughs) like, okay, just like literally hiding from myself or something. I don't know what I was hiding (laughs) from my buddies in the other room. And then eventually we decided to go outside into nature Mm -hmm. and it was like, Oh, oh man. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy, man. Yeah. We, at any point, we have access to having a total freak out panic attack mm-hmm. or complete bliss. Yeah. Like, like both so of them, true. it's like they're instantaneous. They're right there. It's just a yeah. matter of uh, flipping the station. That's where it gets tricky. It's like, well, how the hell do we control this, these stations? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, totally. You still got to get up and walk across the carpet and turn the channel sometimes. Well, yeah. so then you can tap in. <laughs> that's what my book's about, actually, in large part, is is how do we start to tap into these environmental cues or postural cues mm-hmm. um, to start to augment the stations that we have access to. Yeah. So sounds in your environment affect your physiology. They affect your mental, physical state, as does your sight. You know, so when you're chronically looking at your cell phone, for example, that puts you into more of like this executive function, mm-hmm. sympathetic, go get her done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then compared to like looking into a panorama, looking out into the yeah. horizon over the mountains, over the ocean. Yeah. Immediately, everybody's just. Oh, yeah. Wow, man. yeah. What was I so stressed out? Yeah. About? What was the big deal? Why yeah. was I hiding under my sheets in my bed <laughs> having a <laughs> panic attack because of these mushrooms? Yeah. Like everything's cool. Yeah. You know, so you start to augment your your visual spectrum to augment your your emotional spectrum. Mm. Yeah. It's pretty absolutely. darn interesting. I love yeah. it. Yeah. And then body it. language is is a similar thing. There's all sorts of interesting research that shows when we are in certain positions, it affects our our memories. It affects mm. the way that we you know, think in general. Right. Also. Yeah. Yeah. Hormonal we perceive ourselves 
Yeah. Yeah. That's that's so that stuff. Amy Cuddy. I, I talked about that as well. Uh, mm-hmm. Research from Amy Amy Cuddy in, in Harvard. Um, her there's been like a bunch of kind of refuting evidence going against the testosterone cortisol mm-hmm. connection. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she had a counter going the other direction. So it's still like this back and forth debate right. of the direct hormonal effect. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, it, there there isn't a debate that there, there has an effect on the way that you you feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You yeah. Know, yeah. The outlook outcome. and creativity right. and even accessing memories. Interesting. Yeah. And when did you get specifically interested in movement? As the, as your medicine, so to speak. Mm. I was obsessed with bodybuilding mm-hmm. uh, around the same time that I was tripping on shrooms under my blankets, <laughs> <laughs> and um, that was a product of a lot of insecurity. Mm. And so I was trying to pack on as much like tissue, you know, kind of like <laughs> yeah. imagine there's like a, you have like a shitty house, you know, it's unstable and like wind could knock it over, and you're just trying to like pack on any kind of like manure or silly yeah. putty, just kind of like trying to yeah, plug yeah. it in, Short plug up. it in the holes. Mm-hmm. That was kind of what I was doing with muscle. Yeah. And so I was just like packing on as much as I possibly could to be as like thick and strong and, you know, robust looking kid as I could be. Um, and so that was my initial like foray into like fitness. Mm. And I was doing personal training, teaching people how to, you know, destroy themselves essentially the same way that I was destroying myself. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And then got into putting the parts back together after like a whole bunch of injuries and all sorts of weird stuff. Um, and then so that kind of like rolfing and, you know, general forms of manual therapy and studying psychology and getting more enamored by like yeah. the big thing that I'm curious is like, what the hell are we doing here in the first place? Like what's yeah. the point of anything? Sure. Um, and while I'm at it, I figure I, I may as well like take care of my body. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Just in case, <laughs> yeah. just in case what yeah. we're here for requires something physical. Like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. just, know. Know. If anything yeah. has any value at all, but in case it does, I should probably like sweep up. Yeah. yeah totally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keep this. Clean up a little bit. Yeah, get the get so, the dust bunnies out of the corners. You mentioned um, packing on muscle mm-hmm. in order to kind of shore up insecurities. What were those insecurities? Mm, man, all sorts of things. I think a big thing is just being worthy of love, which mm-hmm. is something that gets repeated a lot. So it sounds almost cliche, but I think mm-hmm. it's consistent with a lot of a lot yeah. of people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so where the root of that came from could be you know a variety of different places but i think that was a big thing just like being worthy of acceptance and love and um yeah like a a sensation of a lack of worthiness Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and did you feel that like through actually shoring up your physicality some of that worthiness came or was it superficially it's like it's like uh kindling Mm -hmm. yeah you know so instead Mm -hmm. of having like a hearty love like log you know like ketosis or whatever (laughs) Um, it's, it's more, you know, you get these superficial vein, like, Oh, somebody likes me cause my car. Oh, somebody mm-hmm. likes me cause my book. Oh, somebody likes me cause my muscles Oh, let, right. you know, fill in the blank thing mm-hmm. feels good momentarily, but it's more like happy as opposed to joy. Yeah. You know, so I have these little sparks of happiness, but then I go whoosh, straight back to hiding, hiding underneath my blankets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so finding something that's more consistent, I think is more, you find that more like within mm-hmm. yeah you know stillness yeah. sitting with all that shit that makes you uncomfortable yeah, yeah. it's a big deal yeah, yeah totally course. that's kind of like the um you know the, the what am i trying to say I, I could correlate that to the idea of you know a mindfulness practice stemming from a psychedelic experience right like my experience yeah. with it is that yeah, it's i the mean whole point i of tried it. really hard to meditate for a really long time and it wasn't until actually an ayahuasca ceremony that I got a, like a target, you know, and it was very clear to me. Yep. It's like, this That's is it. what you're looking for when you're meditating. You're like, Oh, yeah. okay. Now I can find my way back to that, you know? And so I could see a similar thing where you're saying, you know, the, the bodybuilding or whatever it is that you're doing to shore up the way that you're feeling about yourself can give you that a glimpse of what it must be like to actually feel confident and embodied in what's going on. And then it's just, figuring out how to get there. Yeah. 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 I think that's, I mean, the psychedelics, I think in large part, the religions that we base a lot of our lives around, um, a lot of philosophies, you know, Apple computers that you guys are using Mm -hmm. right now. Uh, you know, Francis Crick and the double helix, you know, that not necessarily that came from psychedelics, but he was apparently was a day yeah. tripper. He was like, you know, yeah. using psychedelics regularly. Yeah. Um, the first incidents of psilocybin or psychedelics in general, I think it was like 5,300 years ago, hmm. which is like older than most religions that we're talking about. Yeah. You know, and then there's been a transition into like shaming and fear and right. A lot of that was product in large part of like the Nixon administration, like the war on drugs, yeah. which 
with that, from my understanding, he was trying to figure out a way to outcast hippies and black people. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it'd be like, okay, like drugs are bad. Now we're yeah. raiding your home and villainizing you. Yeah. You know, so if you're out there like smoking a joint, like, mm No way, man. You can't be, be yeah. uh, protesting Vietnam War because you're in jail now. Yeah, totally. You Making know, and that, and that jazz spills music. into yeah. our belief system of our perception of, you know, things that have been considered like mind expansing expansive substances since the beginning of human history. Yeah. Now we're like, we have this like clenching fear about it because it's been baked into the culture. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not very well read on like the, the beginning of quote unquote modern religion, but man, I just have a really hard time believing that it didn't spark from some sort of psychedelic experience, whether it was, you know, elicited from starving in the desert or some sort of breath work or accidentally eating something psychedelic. But it's like, you look at all the, the origin stories of all of modern religion, they all start with some, you know, extraordinary experience that like, I'm like, yeah. shit, I've done that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I saw that Sounds guy one time. I mean, I've talked to that guy that came down on the cloud and told me all of this stuff. You know what I mean? I've been yeah, happens. When, yeah. So when cultures don't have access to like typical, you know, convenient psychedelics like mushrooms or peyote mm -hmm. or ayahuasca or whatever. Not that ayahuasca is convenient at all because you got to like mix <laughs> these random plants together. Who the hell figured that out? Right. Um, but cultures that don't have access to those things that kind of like loosen up the binds of your neurology and mm -hmm. you know, your belief systems open you up to something else. Um, typically they'll go through what they call ordeal poisoning, which is what you're describing. Yeah. You know, we're like, okay, cool. Like we don't, we can't just take those mushrooms and, you know, explore all these different parts of ourselves. Um, okay. Maybe we should just starve, yeah. you know, and or see where that takes us or water fast or maybe, yeah. yeah. Any of that stuff. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. another thing. Right. Like rite of passage, like the bullet yeah. ant thing. We don't have much of that in our culture either. Yeah. We need True to do harder that. things. I you agree know, psychedelics is a really prime example of like, yeah, Oh, that can be real hard, you know, and you get to the other, other side of that. Yeah. And I felt this tangibly before getting to the other side of like a big trip. I don't trip that often, by the way, we're talking about a lot. So it seems like I'm like right. tripping right now. <laughs> Technically I had a microdose of psilocybin this morning. Um, but <laughs> just, just but, to be totally just authentic. To be, yeah. Just to be clear. That doesn't yeah. Count. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, that's awesome but, uh, <laughs> you came to the right house then <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good. Good. Yeah. Um, but yeah that's all that stuff we don't have we don't have a lot of hard things in our culture you mm -hmm. know which leads us to feeling kind of i think this like internally meandering anxious pacing sensation of like what am i doing like if you're building a house, you're building a house. Mm -hmm. You're like, yeah, what are we doing? You're like, well, we're putting the boards up. We're throwing, picking that up, moving that dirt. Yeah. You know, you have this really gratifying sensation. Right. If what you're doing is like posting pictures of your butt on Instagram and you're an influencer, <laughs> you're asking for trouble. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Dude. I mean, yeah. yeah. It's actually, it's really interesting to me because Instagram in a, a very interesting way sort of forces you to define who you are. Like if you want to take it serious and actually use it as a medium to, to speak to people about what you stand for, yep. it actually kind of distills out in you. What do I stand for? And it's really interesting to see it from that perspective, to like actually recognize that when people really look deeply within, this is the message they found. And you're like, wow, that really, in a way, it does say a lot about how a person presents themselves in the world or what's really important totally. to them deeply. And it's, it's yeah. I find Instagram to be very interesting in that way where you're like, oh, it's all superficial or it's all, and you're like, actually, no, if you think about it, a lot of times these people are like literally really thought about what they wanted to say and what is important to them to show to the world. And, yep. and this is what butt. they came up yeah. with. It doesn't mean it was <laughs> and right. It, might be it doesn't mind. mean it was like even that they're going to agree with that in two days or two totally. months or two yeah. years or yeah. like they're very likely will come to a point where you're like, oh, I don't agree with any of that. Yeah. Right. And that's, I think that with like, even like writing the book, I'm like, Right now, I'm like, this is a, a great book. I'm right. like, I'm like, hell yeah. Like, Stamp, I'm super, yeah. super psyched about it. I'm like, get it out there. This is good. Yeah. Um, in five years, I'm, I almost guarantee there's going to be a good percentage of it that I'll like be like, eh, I've kind of <laughs> changed yeah. actually. Like, yeah. I, I don't think that, you know, where my mind was at that point isn't where it is now. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Which is a good place to be at all the time of just question everything, like, especially your own thoughts. Mm hmm. 
You know, if you're too yeah. confident about your own stuff, um, I don't know, you'll yeah. probably at least be like annoying sometimes. Yeah, right. totally. Well, the metamorphosis <laughs> yeah. is important. Go back and read your old blog posts <laughs> yeah. for sure. And you're it's like, so true. Jesus, what is oh, this? What was I it's so true. We actually, we, we, went, we did that recently. Like we completely switched our website platform over and we're forced to kind of go through our old blog posts and to, okay, what are we going to migrate to the new site? You know, and you're like, Jesus, like, who wrote this stuff? You know, what is this? I mean, a lot of the fundamental stuff is still there, but the way that you talk about it, which I think is like a window into the way that you think about it is just totally different. You know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah totally in the last thing. five years, what has changed on your, philo in your philosophy? And by that, I mean, have you, do you feel like you know less now than you ever knew before? Or are you more short up on certain things that you thought you, that maybe you were a gray area before, like overall in the last five years, like how, how has this changed for you? One thing. So I started my podcast like almost five years ago. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so that's like an interesting time that was a big transition in all sorts of different directions going instead of just operating a, a manual therapy movement clinic in Oregon and then before that Colorado and, and like just focusing on making that be that was my goal was mm -hmm. to have this successful space and have people come in all that stuff that transitioning into more like well I want to like impact earth mm -hmm. you know and go beyond just like these towns that I live in um, the beginning of starting to have conversations with people that I was really intimidated by and I still mm -hmm. have conversations that I'm intimidated by mm -hmm. which is great um, I would go out of my way to sound to try to to show them that I'm smart mm -hmm. and enough mm -hmm. and more like worthy of love right. yeah. you know it's more of their acceptance mm -hmm. and so I would and by doing that um, I would essentially just put like a block yeah. Uh, but now I see it all the time. I, I see it, you know, to, to come interview with somebody just recently where I was like, oh, I see. They're like just starting their, their, their mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. You know, and they're like, dude, I'd love to do a thing with you or whatever. And I could feel like they were like a little bit nervous yeah. doing it and all this stuff. Yeah. And I was like, oh, damn, like that's that. Like yeah. I see it. I yeah. see it. They're yeah. pulling out all these facts and stuff. And I'm like, that was it. <laughs> You know, totally. So instead of living through my heart, which is what people are most, for the most part, like deprived of, mm -hmm. I was more just like packing on more information through mm -hmm. my, through my brain of shit stats that I've, you know, remembered yeah. so right. I can put into this moment. Right. And I'm just essentially putting like this, like condom between me and the person. <laughs> yeah. Totally. And now, so I'm now more interested in like taking the condom off. <laughs> yeah. Bareback it. I'm bareback. <laughs> bareback. The best I can. Yeah. There's still remnants of cotton. Yeah, right totally. Again. <laughs> well, it's just like the bodybuilding thing, you know? Yeah. I feel so lucky because... <laughs> Because Adam and I are like the way our relationship is, he's really the fact person that I've like never had to wear the condom. I'm like, I know nothing. Good. That's good. Yeah, take I'm it like, off. Yeah. I'm literally Not here just to talk about things. And then if I have a, if I need a fact, I'm gonna have to reference Adam. Yeah. My preference yeah. with with this is more information than what you need. My preference with sex with a person for the most part is if we need to wear a condom, I probably need to address think more into whether I should be sleeping with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like if we can't get to that point, like I think we probably, we probably rush into sex right? quicker than what we need to sure. in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And so I think that if we do like yeah. slow things down mm -hmm. and get to a point of like, okay, are we like, are we good with this? Like, yeah. is this like what we're the right decision? Are we, you know, yeah. right. are we in alignment? Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think, I think that the metaphor can also be literal, but, the yeah. metaphor is valuable as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> both, both things it are translates. good. translates. Yeah. What do yeah. you guys think about condom sex? Oh, oh man, man. who been, does that? Yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, <laughs> don't know. we've been married for sixteen years. Yeah, I don't. Do you guys have open relationship? Up? Do you get monogamous? Sex. I mean, you seem like you're like a free love type couple. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong? You know, well, yeah, it's yeah. been interesting because obviously <laughs> TMI over the podcast. <laughs> yeah, no, it's oh, good. It, it's fine. But like, it's over the years. Obviously, we've been together for almost twenty years. Yeah, right. Damn, so crazy. Yeah, so what are your ages? You've been uh, together forever. I'm forty one, and um, Adam's forty two. Yeah, three. Yeah. Well, or, yeah, I'll, I'll be forty three in a couple yeah. days. Wow. Yeah. 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 So I mean, we've been Forever's. together for like that ever, forever, for, yeah. forever, ever. So it's just one of those things where yeah. like you know when you're together for that long, obviously we've explored other situations and like, but one of the things that we realized early on is if you're going to be married and together that young, I mean, we were 20 years old, essentially, right? Yeah. You're going to have to have somewhat of an open mind to this process of marriage. And so the choice was... You guys yeah. do. Right. Well, well, for us, this from was... From like a religious perspective and culture perspective, like... Mm -mm. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. <laughs> but you yeah, know, I think... Close that shit down. Yeah, yeah. Lock, <laughs> lock it up. Until death but do think, you part. <laughs> yeah. But that, you know, I think for both of us, like, that was just never something... 
like neither of us grew up being like, oh man, I can't wait to get married. This is going to be the thing I'm going to do. I'm going to find my person. I'm going to lock it down and I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. It was like, you know, when we got together, it was a complete accident. You know, (laughs) we were like, oh oh, yeah, well shit, there you are. Like, this seems pretty amazing. You know what I mean? And then as we evolved along, Vanessa's like, so what do you think about marriage? And I'm like, oh yeah, maybe five, six years down the road. You know I mean? It was not like some thing that we were both just trying to do. And so I think it, it gave us this opportunity in the beginning to be, to have a really kind of objective look at it. You know, we both come from divorced families with, you know, not necessarily a tremendous amount of trauma or anything around it, but like you fully recognize that this is a a reality, you know, and a a distinct possibility in life, you know? And so I think we had a pretty objective look at what, you know, marriage could look like and what it was going to look like for us in order to be successful moving forward. And I mean, and that just started with, with honesty, like brutal fucking honesty, Mm damn the torpedoes kind of honesty. And that's what's gotten us where we are, you yeah. know, through all like of the bullshit. That. I don't like that word divorce. And you say like we come from divorced or like failed relationships. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. about like adaptable or pivoting or pivoted. transitional? Yeah, pivoted. yeah, both of our are transitional parents. Parents. Pivoted early on. Definitely pivoted. <laughs> they are pivoting. Yeah. It's funny, yeah. yeah. It's funny, my mom feels the same way. She's like, when they have like the, you know, the form where you fill out like married or divorced or whatever, she's yeah, just like, I don't want any of these categories. Yeah. No, like, she don't oh. want me in a box. That. Yeah, well, that'll be the next thing. At least in California, there'll be another. It's the same box. with like gay, hetero, tra- like we, yeah. we we demand containment. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. know, like what is your box? Check right. your, we box. Need your box. Where do you yeah. fit? We need box. the box. Yeah, I don't have the time or the energy to figure this out for myself. Yeah, yeah. 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 redefine this yeah. for me. And then I think that that is like. Um, have you ever heard of the, the medium is the message or the medium is, is the massage? Mm-hmm. It's like a pretty popular, just a tiny little book. Uh, Marshall McLuhan. So he gets in with that, that the, the medium, i.e. like the the internet and the cell phone and the boxes that we oh, fill yeah. in, like the, the environment that we live yeah. in, it massages our minds and our thoughts mm. and our, you know, our actions yeah. into, into what they are. You know, so like when you're reading a book, it's not so much the information you're getting from the book, but more the, uh, the the medium that you're getting information from in the first place is is the the big effect that it has on you. Got it. Mm-hmm. That so you're when you're living in a book, world where right? okay, cool, I I check the box, male, okay, divorced, okay, heterosexual, okay, da da, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm, I I make I make sixty thousand dollars a year, da, da, yeah. da, da, da. You know, whereas if you go to like a hunter gatherer tribe or something like that, you're like, well, I don't even. What are you? I, yeah. What's what a box? What are you What is a box? <laughs> we were watching this. Um, I ate ants out of a log this yeah. morning. <laughs> totally. So what box. are these boxes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. it's true. We were watching this documentary. And it was about these African tribesmen that were starting to. Um, it was the Maasai actually coming mm. into these. Uh, communities in Africa that were like had tourist tourism that was you know starting to burgeon in their particular area and one of the assignments they were giving the tribesmen was to hang, hang pictures on the wall and they oh, couldn't yeah. hang them straight they yeah, were like cool. so confused by like well they lines. just didn't know to right yeah, it was like yeah, I don't like know. What is, it's just there. What yeah. is the line or how? And because they're yeah. just not used to those dynamics in yeah. nature, and it was just super funny to think about that. Like exactly yeah. like what you're saying. Like that's not even a category for them right. to think of. Like I put in, it on the wall. Yeah. like you said, I don't see what's wrong with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's when like I, words, definitive words like right, wrong, good, mm-hmm. bad, all that stuff. They've become more and more um, just strange. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. to me, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, yeah. it's like cause you could easily in in this in this medium that we exist in that picture that we have over here, it's straight. You're like, that's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, totally. Whereas a Maasai comes in, it's like, you know, whatever sideways, whatever. It's like, it's yeah. what is right. Yeah. 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 No, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we're, I mean, it's the, it's the nature versus nurture argument kind of at the core, right? It's like it, you, you grow up in and learn about all of that shit from your environment, you know, mm-hmm. like from, square one Mm -hmm. you know it's like the this is just how all of this stuff goes i mean i think there's obviously some some variability there right like there's there's people who grow up in the same culture right next to you know somebody next door and somebody's going to have this kind of engineering mindset where everything should be perfect and some retentiveness around everything being straight and the other person might be 
a total artist that can't show up to anything at time, but it makes beautiful paintings or whatever the thing is, right? So obviously there's room even within our cultural constructs that exist for all of these, you know, variations to show up. But it's like, how do you, how do you nurture that as a, um, as a process of growing up as like taking the pieces of your environment that you think are beneficial or serve the direction that you're trying to go in your life and like disregarding the rest of them, you know, Mm. like how do we, how do we like instill that in kids, you know, or people that are, I don't know, finding their youth at a later age, which (laughs) happens too, right? Like all these people who are leaving a corporate job and going out into the wilderness to figure out what the fuck's going on in life. You know, it's Mm -hmm. like, how do you cultivate that in people? You know, I think in a lot, in large part, the present educational system, which I've been out of for a little while. So maybe I I might be a little disconnected from (laughs) it, but my sense and memory and a bit of witnessing that I have of it, um, kind of teaches people how to be cogs in a wheel. Yeah. You know, it teaches you how to learn to pass a test. You're t- the teachers are teaching to the test because mm-hmm. they have to pass these certain standards and they right. want funding from the government or you know, what have you. Um, and that's once you, you know, go into the world, no one gives a shit that you can pass yeah. a test. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No one cares. Yeah. It mm-hmm. doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. They care about, you know, more, more, you know, intrinsic skills like empathy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, how's your, like the, you're getting into the book, like body language, you know, how to communicate in such a way that makes people feel connected and are you able to mm-hmm. create rapport and, you know, are you savvy enough to you know be able to think on your feet and have creative ideas that maybe like, Oh, I see things maybe a little bit different as opposed to I've been taught to just fit inside of these boxes. Yeah. And so those are the, oddly enough, the people that oftentimes end up being outcasted. It's again, that like border territory often are the people that make the biggest shift, Mm -hmm. you know, make the biggest change in the world. And they're like, Mm -hmm. no, you know what? Like, I think that picture would be cool if it was just slightly sideways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just you a know, little. Like, yeah. No, it's like, he's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy and his crooked pictures. Yeah. 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 I don't know. And so I think that it's, uh, there would be great value to children if they were taught more um, how to be creative and how to push boundaries and how to, yeah. um, to take care of themselves. Meditation, mm-hmm. self-care, yeah. mm-hmm. breath. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, do you know yeah. how to breathe? Have you ever learned that in college? Right. You know, or have you ever learned like how to make sure that your connective tissue is healthy so you don't have to replace your hip when you're 40? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's so many different things. Like if you're not content and satisfied and enjoying the experience in your physical body, it doesn't matter how many zeros you have in your bank account. It yeah. really doesn't fucking no, matter. No. no, not at all. No, not even a little. Your health is your wealth. Man. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so I want to um, kind of tie a couple of things that we've been talking about together because the you know, what we were talking about earlier in the kind of rite of passage thread in, in doing things that are hard. And I think like this has certainly been something that I have leaned towards is like the things that I want to be, you know, my rites of passage, the things that I do that are hard have generally been in the gym. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, that's something I can, I'm like, I know what's up. A heavy deadlift is hard and I can go in and I can see progress and I can feel like I accomplished something at the end of, you know, my workout or whatever. And that's also pretty clear to me that over time, you know, you start to beat yourself up pretty badly. You know, you may be not taking care of your body really well in that regard. And so I'm wondering what your thoughts are on how to blend that. Like how, if, if the access that you have to something challenging, whether it's all you have, or if you just really like training, you know, being in the gym, if that's your hard thing, what are you doing to, Make sure that you have the longevity with that and really care for your body and do it in a way that's, you know, meeting the criteria, so to speak, for, um, well, for what you lay out in the book. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't want to preload it too much, but like, how do you address that, I guess? Well, one, uh, if that's your forte is deadlifts and fitness and all that stuff, it's probably not much of a rite of passage for you because it's the thing that you already veer towards. So it's probably Mm -hmm. not that uncomfortable at all. Yeah. Um, So emotional vulnerability with like a female or something like, you know, raising a puppy or something like that might be even more of a rite of passage. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So always veering into those, into that discomfort. You know, my buddies at the, yeah, I don't know if you guys, Yes Theory, their like tagline is seek discomfort. They're here Mm -hmm. in LA. Um, you know, so I think that that, like becoming enamored by going into discomfort is, is valuable, but that doesn't, in relation to the question, if, if your focus is like, well, that's great. I don't want a puppy. I want to keep deadlifting. Yeah. Um, 
pay attention to your, in the book, I call it the, the positions of repose. Mm. You know, so repose, you're resting. That's the other side of the coin. So we're really, we pay great attention to the active side of the coin. You know, so you see the rock on the cover of muscle yeah. and whatever, and you, yeah. see, you see people doing handstands on the edges of roofs. And it's like, whoa, like, right. you know, that's what we see. It's like, okay, I just want that. Uh, you don't really too often see people on the cover of some magazine sitting and, you know, rolling their hips out with a ball or <laughs> doing some band it. exercise with their yeah. shoulder. It's like not that sexy. Yeah. Or even just the way that they're sitting as they're working on their computer. Mm -hmm. Um, there's so many options that you could be doing to be mobilizing your hips and circulating blood and lymphatic fluid and, uh, really taking your whole body through this, this therapeutic healing response just by the way that you check your emails. Yeah. You know, so culturally we've left so much therapeutic money on the table mm. in the form of, uh, you know, we're just outsourcing all of our movement to sitting on chairs. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so cultures that spend more time sitting on the ground, uh, mm -hmm. and, and toileting on the ground and eating on the ground, doing all that stuff. They have minimal to no incidence of osteoarthritis in the hips, like half the incidence of osteoarthritis in the knees. Um, you know, incontinence issues like that end up diminishing right. greatly fall risk. Like that's the number one reason for elderly needing yeah. to be going to assisted living. Mm -hmm. Um, that's just not even a thing. Mm -hmm. Like I fall and I can't get up is like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you had to get up to get up. This you morning. had to get <laughs> up to get up this morning. Yeah. Like if you can't get yeah. up, mm -hmm. you're not here yeah. anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. did you well, did you poo and pee today? Fair. You're like, Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, but I, I yeah. was down to like ninety eight degrees to yeah. do it. Right. And it's like, Oh, like you're not even human. Yeah. At that yeah, point, yeah. like the beginning of your evolution was, oh, okay, cool. I can squat all the way down and all the way back up. Now I'm whittling some nuts or something. I don't even think they would, I don't know what whittling nuts would <laughs> right, even mean, right. but I'm like doing know. some shit in the dirt. <laughs> yeah. I live in Santa Monica. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we Digging whittle nuts the there. Hypothetically. <laughs> but I've been to these places, man. I like, I mean, I've, I like lived in Guatemala for a while. I've been all over South America and I'm, mm -hmm. you know, I've lived in Morocco for a bit. And, yeah. um, you know, I, I, as I was in those places, I was paying fairly close attention to the way that people were moving around and you see these and they might not have been 90, but they looked old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. women walking through the woods with what seemed to be, I don't know how much weight, a buttload right. of weight of like logs and sticks to bring back to the village. Yeah. And they got this strap over their head and they're just huffing that stuff. And they got these little like slippers made out of rope and <laughs> yeah. fingernails or something. And you know, they're, they're going through the woods and there's just like this robust 90 year yeah. old female organism. Yeah. Mm. You know, and she's just been following the principles in the goddamn align method. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out. Without even knowing it. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's so, yeah, it's so true. I mean, we see that, um, we go to Peru uh, pretty much every year, seems like, and it's incredible. I mean, obviously the altitude and stuff there makes a difference. Um, uh, you know, for folks that are coming in, right. You're kind of out of deficit to begin with, but like, yeah. you just look at the way these guys move. They basically just grew up walking uphill and downhill. I mean, there was never like a flat scenario in their lives. You know, <laughs> it's like everything just works. You know, you look at their mechanics and like, everything just works. Yeah. You know, and it's it's a it's such a process for us to unlearn. Uh, you know, everything that we've started. Essentially it doesn't need to be beginning. that much of a process though. So you can get some floor cushions for your house, mm -hmm. you know, get like a few like Moroccan poofs or, yeah. or, you know, get like a really comfy, like the rug we're standing on and be nice to like roll around on, yeah. you know, all these tables and stuff are on top of it. So you'll never use it for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but hypothetically like this area here, you intentionally kind of followed some of the principles in the align method yeah. of the way you set up your living room, you know, so that you're able to roll around and kind of like yeah. open your body up entirely on your floor because you, you have the cushion down there um you know so really simple things like that you know put mm -hmm. a foam roller on the ground hang a band from your door get some yeah. balls to put around put a yoga mat on the ground throw a pull-up bar in between your doorway that you pass through regularly mm -hmm. you know as opposed to having this gym membership right like this that 90 year old lady that walks sticks to the woods yeah she doesn't know what the hell a gym is mm -hmm. right she doesn't know what exercise what do you mean exercise mm -hmm. like my whole life i'm living in my body right. um you know so until we start getting closer to that i'm like so not that impressed with your p90x or your kaibo or whatever <laughs> i think it's great i yeah. think it's like silly and fun right. and it actually has lots of value um, but if the rest of your day you go into just sitting and staring into mm -hmm. a screen 
I'm like, we still haven't gotten it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, but you can still hang out and stare into your screen and do computer crap um, because it would be unrealistic for me to just suggest we like burn computers. Yeah. Just put your computer ideally outside. You know, you mm-hmm. probably work on a laptop. There's a good chance um, and expose more of your body to the sun while you're working on the computer. Put the computer in like a shady place, put a little shade thing on the screen if you need to, mm-hmm. um, you know, sit on the ground, go into, I have all these positions in the, in the book. Uh, you go into like a sphinx type position, laying in your belly, mm-hmm. you can go sideline, you can go into Sukhasana, you can go into 90, 90 position, you can go into straddle position yeah. like that a whole day you could just be in a yoga nature immersion class while you check your emails <laughs> mm-hmm. if you do that your computer yeah. works pretty great because yeah. you're actually doing this therapeutic rest full moment you're mm-hmm. looking out into the distance you're accessing more of that parasympathetic function you know so yeah. if you do that now all of a sudden your computer time is like you it's like a yoga class that you would have paid $25 to go to and you right. would have sat in traffic and drive across town and still been an artificially lit room, yeah. you know, with some air conditioner or whatever. It's like, we have all of the stuff. Mm-hmm. We don't need to relate ourselves to people in Zimbabwe or something like that. And like, Oh, if only I lived in Africa, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. like, no bitch, you're fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Just take <laughs> yeah. some things yeah. around, yeah. get a pull up bar, take more walks. Mm-hmm. You probably have to talk to people for at least 45 minutes on the phone today, schedule all of that so that you're going to walk out outside mm-hmm. you want to stack more variables take your shoes off mm-hmm. stack more variables walk on some roots by a tree mm-hmm. stack more variables take your damn sunglasses off and allow that sun to be exposed to your eyes yeah take your shirt off mm-hmm. yeah take your dick out sometimes yeah <laughs> occasionally you know you want to expose your nuts to the sun yeah. it's important yeah. <laughs> yeah you think about that you know it's like we, we were i know for me it makes a big difference <laughs> <in my day. laughs> it's a big difference for <laughs> all you ladies <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, I was hoping yeah. you would mention it because I was like, are we going to get yeah. to that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, are, when are we talking about the nuts? Dick son. Yeah. Well, but it, dude, it's, uh, I think it's probably an underexplored area, you know, frankly. Because it's like, if you think about, I mean, even me, it's like we live in Southern California. I usually wear relatively short shorts. I don't wear a shirt all that often. But like my ass has not seen sunlight <laughs> for more stuff. than, you know. 20 minutes at a time you know what i mean <laughs> totally. you know, since i was a baby you know yeah. it's like how what is going on with that like how much how much i mean obviously you know you get enough skin exposure and everything to get all of the hormonal response and all the things that you need from the sun but like what about that actual skin that hasn't seen the sun like what's the damage <laughs> there well one oh. uh, there is some some science that i'm actually not familiar enough to like talk about with any authority mm. um but just the value of sun for those specific areas but i don't know yeah. i don't know enough to actually try to make some shit up right now yeah um <laughs> but uh, there is a lot of research around sun exposure to testicles for example of actually yeah. increasing testosterone levels mm. you know, so just think of the sun like sun it's a it's a real animate thing mm-hmm. you know it's like yeah. it's you know it's photons energy, and yeah. particles it's and it's, 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 poof, yeah. it's yeah. hitting you yeah it's a massage yeah. you know you have a theragun sitting over there it's like you put that thing and you hear him like yeah i'm getting it in there i'm getting yeah. a percussion <laughs> yeah that's sun yeah. right that's what's happening yeah. you're getting percussed by photons and they're charging your cells mm-hmm. You know, so for yeah. you to cover yourself up in fear of that and then instead buy vitamin D supplements or yeah. whatever, it's yeah. like, what are you doing? Right, right. <laughs> it's yeah, all we're, we're doing this all wrong. Yeah. You know? And then that's not to mention the shame that most of us, you know, me, has around genitals and anus and, yeah. you know, perineum and all those right. parts. All those words. Like, imagine know. if I, like, came in here and I was just like, here's my anus. <laughs> yeah. You'd be like, oh, God, <laughs> I hate him. <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, <laughs> um, the anus man, it's that guy again. again. <laughs> Yeah. But really, it's like, I don't think your anus is any more weird than your neck or your nipple or your knee. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it just so yeah. happens that we have this cultural belief that like, oh, that's a no-no area. So right. then we have to contract and get shit like prostate cancer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you open mm-hmm. expose yourself entirely, if there's something that you're uncomfortable about, talk about it. Yeah. You know, if there's a part of your body that you're uncomfortable with, find a safe container. You're not going to be offensive and like illegal. Yeah. Expose it. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, you know, the thing though, like I do think about this culturally. Like you're right, and but sometimes I'm like, I, I also like that there are certain things that are like mm-hmm. left mysterious. You know, totally. like I know it in Europe, it up, makes yeah, it red, exactly. Red it's hot. like breasts in Europe are like whatever. Everyone sees them, no big deal. But I'm yep. like, I actually think it's kind of cool that we have these like erogenous zones or whatever that are like, oh, the, you know, you don't get to see everybody's everything, and and it's like 
I don't know. Yeah. I think it's kind of a, a decent amount of it, of mystery. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I yeah. dig it. Well, that's why it was Victoria's balance, Secret, though. Right? Yeah. yeah, you know, totally for sure. But I'm. I just find myself when you know people are like, "Oh, we should just all be naked all the time," and you know, in Europe they're this way, and I'm like, ah, I kind of like that we have like a little mystique to our physicality. Like it's totally kind of sexy, you know. Yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> Until it manifests itself as contraction and, and shame, disease and, and yes, shame totally. and all that. Totally. You know, yeah. so it's like. I think stripping is fine as long as you're empowered as you do it. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so you see a woman like on a pole and she's like really, she's like, wow, it's like a powerful female. She's yeah. like twisting yeah. and turning and yeah. jumping and like totally in her sexuality and yeah. men are just like, Whoa. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> right. you see that, you're like, that's pretty dope. Yeah. You know, like, that's cool. Like, <laughs> she's, she's, doing doing her, she's doing her thing. She's doing her thing. Yeah, yeah you know, totally. Compared to someone that, is doing it because they need to right. and they're yeah. partially pregnant and they're you know they're right. they're yeah, not yeah, yeah. they're they're high on partially some pregnant. amphetamine <laughs> thing or Just you know what I don't know. you know whatever yeah, there's yeah, like yeah. a little popping yeah, you're like yeah, you totally. don't need to be stripping right now <laughs> totally, yeah. you totally. know and then they're like that's a totally different vibe yeah you know so it's both exposing themselves uh, but it's the the container and why they're doing it is completely different mm-hmm. you know yeah. so if you're like talking about this romantic idea of like Europe you know European versus American having yeah. a little bit more like you know, cover up and actually adding to more sexiness mm-hmm. is great. But underneath that cover up, is it a bunch of shame and contraction yeah, totally. or is it like, no, I'm going to cover up to make this hotter. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I want to switch gears a little bit, but I really want to get into this because, um, you do rolfing and I want to mm. talk a little bit about that because I've had some of it done in the past, but I'm, I'm curious about like how you got started with that and how that plays into the book, if at all, and and just really explain to our audience like what that process is and what that opens up for people. So Rolfing, mm-hmm. one of the worst, the most terrible branded names. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is, yeah, it's horrible. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, when you first hear it, yeah, yeah. Rolfing. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go get Rolf. Let that sink yeah. in. Yeah, <laughs> it's not good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, especially when they're like, and the first thing we do when we go rolfing is I'm going to put my hand in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's session seven. That's yeah. the seventh yeah. session. Yeah. Um, yeah, warm up for it. That's the face session. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so structural integration is, is like a, a more, I think, a, it's like a better name. You mm-hmm. know, so, so you're integrating your physical structure. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of it, it comes from osteopathic perspectives. So if we integrate, align our parts, mm-hmm. stack our ankle in relation to our knee, in relation to our pelvis and pelvic floor and spine and neck and head, uh, then all of a sudden that internal circuitry and plumbing and all of the inside stuff is able to be stacked up in alignment so it can heal itself. Mm-hmm. Your body is a self healing miracle. Yeah, totally. And if you can put it all the places yeah. into their correct spots, then all of a sudden the body is Woo, cool. Got mm-hmm. it. Whatever the problem was, we're like we'll figure it out coach. Just like, you know, carry on. Yeah. Carry yeah. on. Like yeah, we yeah. got it. Yeah. Just keep moving. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's the whole, whole premise of structural integration or rolfing or anything, any form like that, uh, is working via connective tissue mm-hmm. and more like slow adjustments, uh, rehydrating tissue, mm-hmm. uh, compared to oftentimes people relate to like chiropractic cause it's like spinal alignment. Chiropractic focuses on high velocity. We're like whacking the joints into place. Uh, rolfing or structural integration is going slow and focusing on connective tissue, mm-hmm. but the end goal is always integration of all the parts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's, um, it tends to be pretty intense, right? I mean, at least the sessions that I have had have been pretty, it doesn't pretty, need to be. So, intense. so, so that's, that's like, it depends on who you see. So mm-hmm. it's like, you know, relate to if you go to have Chinese food and the person puts a buttload of chilies in or something mm-hmm. like that, you're like, Oh, Chinese food. It's always like, really? Yeah. Okay. It's like, well, that was just how that chef makes their Got it. noodles. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's one way to do it. Yeah. Um, but there's also lots of more subtler approaches to, mm-hmm. to structural integration. That's good. Yeah. And it's more where I come from. So, so Got I, it. I, the way that I operate and I think you can see this way, even way people like conduct themselves in conversation or in life mm-hmm. in general. Uh, my goal ideally is to sit right at your boundary mm-hmm. and patiently wait for you to open it up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so if I yeah. can sit right there, yeah. like we just did the acro yoga stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So at no point was anything painful, probably, mm-hmm. I don't think. Yeah. Um, but we're right at kind of your edge. You're like, okay, cool. Like, boop, that's the stopping point. Let's just be there and breathe into that. Totally. And still your own nervous system feels safe enough to go in and, and, and Release. change itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can do that with pressure as well. Yeah, no, and that was actually my my perspective on it is that I felt like the practitioner that I had, it was almost too aggressive where it was mm-hmm. like, you know, my body was basically just going into parasympathetic yeah. drive. You can <laughs> usually get that from it. So, so <laughs> having, like, we're literally 
body work and conversations are pretty much the same thing. It's just yeah. instead of using words alone, because mm-hmm. body work, you use words too. Um, you're using pressure, like yeah. physically, okay, this is here. I can touch and push. Mm-hmm. But in the end, it's just my nervous system dancing and communicating with your nervous system. Mm-hmm. So if my nervous system says like, you got to change, yeah. your yeah. nervous system is like, I don't oh, think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who's this guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if it's I saw more, you hang that picture. It was yeah, crooked on yeah, the wall. Yeah, right. You know, and so you're yeah. like, wow, he really knows exactly where my body should be. Yeah. But I'm not interested in any of his information. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so or you can approach a conversation more just like asking poignant questions to get you to find the answer yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Typically, if you find the answer yourself, then you're like, okay, cool. Yeah. You know what? I th- that's a yeah. That's a great idea. It's yeah. like, Why is it a great idea? Because it's my idea. It's mine. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I'm glad you asked me that question because I yeah. just came up with a really was, good idea. Uh, <laughs> yeah, something. yeah, totally. Yeah, that's a really good way of looking at that. Like one of our um, one of our friends, Angelo, who comes on some of our retreats. He's a, a body worker and personal trainer guy. And he, you know, if you ask him, like, okay, well, what is this that you're doing? He's like, well, it's a combination of this and blah, 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 like all of these different things. But it's like everybody that has ever had him lay hands on them, it's like, well, this is just magic, you know? Cool. And it's the way that he talks about it, too, though. He's like, well, you know, we could do this. Yeah, I could flip you over on your back and, you know, apply some pressure into your socket and twist this over and get here. He's like, but why not just ask your body to do it and, like, make it feel safe and then it'll just do it on its own? Yeah, that's it. And I was like, man, that's a really good <laughs> idea, Angelo. <laughs> but getting to but, that point oftentimes can take uh, lots of time of studying the more structured yeah. anatomy and physiology and learning right. all the acronyms understanding I do proprioceptive yeah. neuromuscular facilitation and now i do yeah. you know art and now i do that and like you get through all those layers so you kind of build up your toolbox yeah for people that don't give a shit about body work this could relate to anything that you're into any totally. you know profession or any you know, any yeah. form of communication which is everything um <laughs> you know and so as you get deeper into that point eventually you become so fluid with all of those different tools mm-hmm. that now you can start to you know just move more with intuition mm. you know and maybe you don't remember the specific anatomical term for yeah. bicep brachialis or mm-hmm. right. you know whatever it is right. um, but you can feel that tension and you kind of have this internal sensation that the person maybe has some clenching in their abdomen or maybe they have some type of like deeply held fear or shame or something that's causing their global nervous system to go into a more of a place of like collapse or right. twist or turn or torque yeah you know, and that's when all of a sudden the conversation opens up and it becomes, for me, way more interesting. Yeah. Um, but also, I think, pretty darn impactful. But you yeah. can access the, the, the emotional body and the thoughts and all that stuff through the physical body. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, mm-hmm. so just because I don't want to, like, put down people that are excessively linear and excessively, like, tissue-based. Right. Because you can, any if you create change in the physical body, and the body actually shifts and changes the way that it walks and breathes, you have changed the emotional body. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. So your breath, if your breath is stuck up in your clavicles and you're, and you're breathing, your mouth breathing, and yeah. you're fast and short like a mouse, <laughs> like that <laughs> yeah. affects your thoughts totally. and affects your totally. perception of people. And, you know, someone, there's, there's a... On the, on the table, because like, hmm. yeah. you know, your nervous system's at the edge of freak out. Already freaked right. out, right. yeah. You know, so it's all connected. You can think you're smart and clever and think you're doing a thing, but in reality, you're always affecting everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember one time, I don't remember where it was, but Kelly, we were with Kelly Starrett coaching something. It must have been forward for the buck. Mm. Oh yeah. Actually. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Kelly's the man. Yeah. We were, we must've been one of the primal con things. And uh, somebody was talking about, we were, I mean, it was some super basic squat stuff and just having him squat to a box. And he's like, well, it's my, you know, like anterior fibialis in the front. And he's like, well, okay, let's talk about more muscle names. I know all the muscle names in the lower leg. <laughs> yeah. He's like, there's the, this one, there's the, this one. He's like, it doesn't fucking matter. He's like, what's matter. going on with your leg? Yeah. Oh, well, when I squat, it does this. He's like, okay, here, you know? And I was like, you know what, dude, that is such a, it's so important because it, I mean, while there is, I like to nerd out on stuff and know things, you know, I mean, it's, I love it. I love reading research and all of that kind of shit. But at the end of the day, doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Which, which exact thing is it? And what's the exact insertion point of what's going on? Like 
does that really impact what you're going to do to solve the problem? You I know? think it can. Yeah. Like, I think there is there is immense value in someone that has nerded out in such a deep, intricate way to learn all the different languages mm. and also be able to draw back and realize that anatomy and physiology is a story that we have devised about the body. Yeah. And when you go through and, you know, you, like I've done cadaver labs and we're cutting out tissues and it's like, okay, cool. We're, we're for the longest time, they'd cut out the, the fascia, the connected tissue, they call it like the packing peanut of the body mm -hmm. now you're like oh by the way it's actually the most sensory rich tissue in mm -hmm. all of the body right mm -hmm. and so that's the part that's controlling the you know muscle length and reflexes and all these different things there's yeah. other things that are controlling muscle length as well um but it's there's so much it's called proprioception mm -hmm. proprioception like it's controlling right. so much of that and we're just like because we don't know what to do with it we just get what throw away all of that yeah. and we focus back onto the muscle belly itself. Yeah. But that's a story that we're convincing ourselves about. Mm. Yeah. You know, so like even like the old school cadaver labs, like uh gallon when he was doing the, like the original ones, I think it was like the 1400s or something like that. Um, they originally allowed to do it on um, convicted prisoners. So if they mm. were like in jail for doing something terrible, it's like, okay, cool. They're on death row. Like we can do we that. Can that alone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But their old belief systems for those people were that uh, they were before that they were they were doing cadaver labs with pigs mm. and with pigs. I'm pretty sure this is right. Fact check this. But the pigs, I think they have three lobes of the heart instead of four, and they have like X amount of lobes of the liver instead of zero. Uh, and they what they found when they would s see these human bodies, they would actually see pig bodies like mm. transposed over that. So when they look at the heart, because they have this old vision and yeah, depiction yeah. of what the heart is like, because uh, that's law, yeah. Yeah, that's science, that's the books, that's yeah. where we're at, it's the cutting edge science. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you look at that and you see like, oh, there it is, I see it. Yeah. You know, but mm. just realize that all of these different ideas and concepts for the most part are stories. We're just doing our best to, to understand what the hell is going on here. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, and the yeah. more that you learn these different stories and you can kind of like conflate, bring them all together, um, the more you, you'll start to see similarities oftentimes, uh, but also realize that like, okay, cool. That's just like a tale that we've woven mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, underneath that. We don't know what the fuck is happening. Yeah. <laughs> we have no idea. Yeah. We're empty space and electrons and neutrons yeah. and yeah. you know, like I, we don't know. How is all this shit sticking together? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so with that in mind, <laughs> What is the methodology in the book? Well, how do you approach that with, with starting it's, from knowing nothing? <laughs> what yeah, is so that? exactly. Yeah. So I, I wrote it essentially as like starting from knowing nothing. Imagine if you were like learning how to drive your car for the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, it breaks down by the end of the book. The guarantee is that you will know how to effectively drive your body, mm -hmm. uh, ranging from how to drive your senses. You know, so so sight and sound and touch and mindfulness. Mindfulness is kind of an iffy sense, but you know, nonetheless, like that's a, a chapter mm -hmm. in there is mm -hmm. getting into just like getting control of your mind, right? Um, body language, you know, giving yourself the the fundamentals of like what the hell is body language in the first place? Like, mm -hmm. how do I understand what that is? Mm -hmm. And then getting into the, into the fundamental mechanics of what it means to move well in daily life. You know, so how do I pick something up off the ground? like a badass, mm -hmm. you know, how do I breathe as I'm walking down the street? Like I'm in control and I feel confident. I feel strong and restorative. Uh, there's fun. There's really simple fundamentals that you can, once you learn those baselines, which we break down in there, you, that spills into everything that you're doing, mm -hmm. including high level stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, that's what I was just getting, getting from this is that really, I mean, you're talking a lot about physicality, but all of this really is a spiritual journey in, in a lot of ways, right? Because yeah. it's like how you feel in your body is how you project. And then, you know, you can talk about law of attraction or whatever. It's like this becomes a, a spiritual journey. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I think your body is a byproduct of what's happening at a deeper level. Like, like, what is that? I think Russell Brand I heard him say all of the outward manifestations are a product of a subtler energy. Mm -hmm. mm. You know, so everything that you see here, even your house, you're looking around like all this stuff, this is just, this is just an outward manifestation of something that's deeper happening inside of you guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, your physical body, the quality of your tissue, the whites of your eyes, mm -hmm. then, you know, the, your tongue like all of those things when you're looking at somebody you're gathering information of where yeah. they're at mm -hmm. you can tell right away if someone's stressed out yeah. you tell right away if someone feels safe and feels content and feels mm -hmm. full you know, like maslow's hierarchy they're in like the self-actualized state and they're like wow i'm just creating yeah yeah like yeah. this you can't 
trick that shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and people, yeah. people <laughs> just, yeah. They're fake it. it. Yeah. Yeah. They're fake it. Yeah. yeah, and they see it, and it's it's funny, because you even can tell for yourself when you're in that space and when you're oh, yeah. not, and you're just like, when you're in it, everything's possible, right? There's like nothing that you can't, you can't step into or you can't create in your life. But I'm curious for you, like when you have those moments of doubt, like if you're not in that flow or you're not feeling that like fully embodied, like flow Mm. state, what are like your go-to movements or what are your go-to positions to kind of like get back into alignment? Yeah. I mean, I have them like every day. Mm. Yeah. Like I go in and out, like ebb and flow of like existential, the same question for like, what the hell are we doing here? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) There is all this. (laughs) This show that we're doing. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's the point of any of it. Yeah. Um, and then again, I see a puppy or, you know, a pretty girl. And I'm like, whoa, okay. That's what we're doing. Here we go. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay. I, I was lost. Now I'm found. Yeah. Um, you know. I love that pu- puppy was in top two there. Puppy in top that, two. That yeah. Puppies are sweet ladies. Penelope. I know. Come on. Um, yeah. So I have uh, f- f- staples that I essentially just do without thinking. Mm-hmm. So I, I go down to the beach, original muscle beach here in Santa Monica for sunset mm. pretty much every day. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'll, I have a cold plunge at my house that I mm. jump into. I jumped in that before I came here. Nice. Um, I will go to the gym for the most part or like a yoga class or something like that in the morning, almost no matter what, you know, so I have simple, easy, accessible things that are kind of like now at this point ingrained into a part of my personality and like my life. Um, that just naturally draw me back Mm -hmm. into somewhere where I do feel a little bit more Mm self-actualized use like Maslow stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, that's it, you know, and also just, I I think, uh, taking it easy on ourselves, Mm. on myself, you know, like you don't need to know everything and Mm -hmm. you don't need to be anybody else's idea of successful. And it's all just fucking stories. Yeah. You know, like the, the deeper value is that you are, um, you know, you feel connected to something meaningful. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I love that. It's important. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm curious because, you know, you said you go in and out of that every day where it's like, you know, you have those moments of, you know, being, being in contrast to the vibration or the experience that you want to be having. Yeah. And, um, if that's like in the middle of the day, like in 30 seconds, what do you do? Mm. Well, you could do breath work. Mm-hmm. It'd be a yeah, thing. The breath is the, yeah, so I'll snap you back. Gateway. So that's again the book I break down. Uh, one of the chapters, one of like the, the the fundamental principles that I have in there is learning to breathe. Mm-hmm. Uh, emphasis on nose breathing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so you could look at your breathing kind of like a gear system. I borrowed that from a guy called Brian McKenzie. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and so he's in the book as well. Um, and so, but you can look at your breathing like 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 a gear. So the lower gears, neutral, first, second, third, all that territory is like nasal breathing, and you can step it up a little bit and then you start nasal breathing in and breathing out of your mouth. Eventually when you get to those higher gears, you know, you're huffing up a mountain Mm -hmm. and you're kind of like going full, full bore. Then, you know, back into full mouth breathing is totally, totally all right. Mm -hmm. Um, but you can kind of jump your gears just by doing some holotropic stuff or Wim Hof stuff or whatever you want to call it, Mm -hmm. um, at your house, you know, so you could be sitting down on the ground, um, or doing like a squat or something like that. Um, that's usually what I'll do squat. Uh, mm-hmm. if I have guests before I get my cold plunge, we'll do this and we'll, we'll sit on the ground and we'll cross our legs up or whatever. We have some cushions for our butts. Um, yeah, and we'll go through that. So we'll do 30 breaths and then a breath hold at the end. Mm-hmm. So big breath. So mm-hmm. <sighs> just stuff you'd see with that women would do. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll do two or three rounds of that. And then, um, sometimes I will just, you know, you could take a cold shower or I jump in the, in the plunge. Um, that would be more like, okay, you're a maybe a little bit more of like an overachiever. You've probably mm-hmm. already like ate the blue pill or whatever color yeah. pill at that point if you're taking that yeah. that tutelage. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing you do is take your shoes off and go out for a walk. Mm-hmm. Um, use your sight. So that was, with that one, I used temperature as a tool. I used breath as a tool and I partially used movement, you know, squatting sit on the ground. Um, but going out for the walk, now we're using nature as a tool, you know, so Shinrin, Yoku, nature bathing mm-hmm. um i.e just fucking being outside yeah and we yeah. don't need to give it a term yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but nonetheless there's like research <laughs> it is, yeah. um 
you know, so oh going God. outside, you're getting, you're getting doused with all this amazing, amazing medicine, uh, just from being outside, being exposed to plants and, you know, seeing more visual stimuli that's active as opposed to this environment. When you come in here, most of this is just cached in your, in your memory. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you walk in this room, you close your eyes and like, boom. Yeah. You know, so therefore your body can kind of shut down a little bit more. All of a sudden, if you go to Bangkok and there's a good chance you're going to get like hit by a car when you're in traffic, you're fucking present. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like way harder to be bummed out when you have to be present. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Right. So the more of a cached environment that you're in where everything's just kind of blase normal, um, I think typically the human organism veers towards anxiety or discomfort or mm. some type of internal like because it, it wants to it wants to go yeah totally. like we want it we want yeah we want stimulation get something, yeah. Get something moving. yeah we want it we want to go and like run through a field imagine like a like a dog like yeah. running like the dog just wants to go yeah you know, like, dog, like what would make you happy labrador <laughs> yeah. like he was like i just want to go <laughs> let me go wherever yeah, yeah. i don't yeah. care the water would be awesome yeah, yeah. <laughs> whereas it's humans so we have all this yeah. and analytical stuff circling through our minds like what would the perfect recipe of okay mm-hmm. some essential oils mm-hmm. and some and it's like just f- go for a walk mm-hmm. man yeah climb a tree you know be silly get yeah. a trampoline jump on it like it's pretty hard to take yourself seriously when you're like a <laughs> so little four foot trampoline it's so true yeah. <laughs> i used to uh, when i worked for the fire department i used to make my guys skip like yeah, before a workout, you know, because everybody be so worked up and, and just amped up about training. And they're just like, oh, man, this is going to be hard. And we're like, all right, guys, here's what's up. Yeah. You're going to skip. And if you don't smile by the end, you're going to skip holding hands. Like, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> that's right. And it's like, dude, 10 yards into it and everybody's smiling. It's like, it's, yep. it's fucking impossible to like yeah, frown so you and literally skip. transform yeah. your whole emotional, physiological, hormonal state. Yeah. Just by doing that silly little thing. Yeah. Mm. You know, it, it also, much. it also, it's, it's shown skipping specifically has shown there's a guy called, I forget his first name, Pepper. He's in the, he's in the book as well. I have a, a reference to skipping. Um, it's shown to increase creativity. Mm. You know, so it's like you start to see the world in a more playful manner. All of a sudden cool ideas start yeah. coming. You know, so like fireworks came from the Chinese, uh, or sorry, dynamite came from Chinese fireworks. Right. You know, so it starts off with like, let's just play. Like, wow, look at those colors. We could kill people with yeah. that. Yeah, we could really. <laughs> but it doesn't, st- <laughs> it doesn't start with like, I want to kill some people. It starts yeah. with like, well, let's skip. And we'll. yeah. I'm not saying skipping will translate to learning to kill people. <laughs> right. But, but it te- might. technically it would. It would translate directly into combat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you're a totally. good dancer, you'll probably be a good fighter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can see that, man. Body awareness. It's rhythm. all the same shit. If you're too yeah. obsessed with fighting, uh, like Bruce Lee, he was he was a, a uh, I forget what kind of dance. It was some kind of partner dance. Mm. It wasn't. It I was, don't know. I forget. I'm spacing what kind it was. But he was a dancer before all his, all his martial arts oh, stuff. Yeah. Interesting. You know, and so you can see, it's like, oh, yeah, he's like dancing through his martial arts stuff. Yeah. But the foundation of good movement in general um, there's going to be a play element to it. Mm. Unless yeah. you're like a linear, like stick in the ass type person, which is yeah, yeah. not made <laughs> fun to be around. Just, yeah. It's not sustainable. Nobody likes that guy anyway. Yeah. So it's yeah. the idea that you can sustain, it's like a, it's like a complex system versus a complicated mm. system, like complexity <laughs> theory. What, yeah. So, so a complicated system be more like a machine. Right. So, you know, okay, cool. That, that gear is connected to that gear and connected to that. If something breaks, then I just take that out and put that back in. Yeah. That's a complicated system. Human organisms and bugs and earth yeah. and all that stuff were complex. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. You know, so for us, we thrive on adaptability and we thrive on the ability to to pivot. Mm. You know, whereas the idea of like back to like the divorce thing, yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, in the complicated system, it's like the divorce is bad. We blew out our tire. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> in a complex system, it's like, oh, yeah. great. We learned to grow. Yeah. 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 Look at all the possibilities. Well, all the possibilities yeah. we got from that, but it's all huh. mindset. Yeah, totally. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. So Complex. what do you want people to know about the book? What is important for you? I think just that we're, we're so, so the way that the book was, was written is in such a way that, so the first analogy that I have in there is that, you know, if you, if you're hitting a golf ball, if it's the, the face of the club is skewed even, you know, five degrees or a small amount, a couple of centimeters or a centimeter, at first you won't see much of a change, but then after, 
you know, 50 yards, you know, a little bit, all of a sudden it's like, whoa, we're shanking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same thing in in your daily life. Like we don't need to make, you don't need to buy brand new clubs, Mm -hmm. which that's what most of like the biohacking and the technology. And, Mm -hmm. you know, if you, if you have an extra 15 grand to spend, like we'll be able to take care of yourselves. Like, no dude, like when was the last time you were on the ground? Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. for most people, it's probably been longer than what it should be. When was the last time you had your arms up over your head? When was the last time you yeah. hung from something? Mm-hmm. You know, when you're in your bathroom and you're brushing your teeth, are you kind of just hunching over through your thoracic spine and putting yourself into more of that forward head posture? Mm-hmm. Or maybe you could start to cultivate some of that spinal neutrality, stacking your central nervous system, which makes you stronger. Mm-hmm. And maybe you could hinge your hips and lengthen your, your hamstrings a little bit. And so everything that we're doing throughout our, our day, the club is just slightly off. And what the book does I think successfully is it helps us to be able to align that mm. that club with really awesome. simple stuff. Yeah. You know, so the big thing that I would want people to know um, is just that you're all you're almost there. Mm. I <laughs> like, love that. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's just There's little more subtle right. changes. Yeah. There's more things right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Mm. That's important. Last question. Hit me. What are you most excited about? Mm wholeness. Mm. Yeah. Like not feeling like there's any deficit. Um, you know, so I think a big thing is, um, that's been the thing. It's like, that's the, you know, it's like the carrots always at the end of, you know, once I get the the thing, then, then I'll, I'll feel good. And there's all these false summits. Um, I'm tired of that. (laughs) (laughs) And so, um, and so going beyond having like the book would be a very obvious carrot. You know, so going beyond like that being, okay, once I, I do that, then that will be, then, you know, there'll be enough and I'll, I'll feel good and great and all that stuff. Um, I think there's, there's deeper realms of satisfaction and contentment that can be found without doing any of those carrots, mm-hmm. you know? And so from there focusing on like, what's the internal bits of feeling, um, safe and welcome and connected and all that. And then from there, eat all the carrots you want. <laughs> Awesome. Mm. Nothing awesome. against carrots. I yeah. love carrots. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. They're good for your eyes. Thank you so much for being here. This is awesome. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah. It's good. <laughs> good show. So what's the best what's what's actually the best way for people to get involved with the book though? Is it like get involved. Uh, pre-order uh, so situation? Yeah, you pre-order, I don't know when you put this out, um, but it'll likely be somewhere it's probably December or something right now, is my guess if yeah. you're listening to this. Um, and the alignbook.com cool uh so a-l-i-g-n book.com so on there there's for if you do get it on pre-sale then we'll have like bonuses you get to read some bit for free yeah. and we'll get some online program thing for yeah. you and hook you up cool and it's worth it folks like pre-ordering books makes a big difference for people mm-hmm. so it's crazy you're buy the damn thing anyway and just author. pre-order it yeah, yeah when yeah. people say like you know it would be really great if you bought the book and like left a review it's like it's actually a, a really meaningful thing whereas yes. me yeah. as a consumer for most of my life i would hear that and be like yeah whatever um but the reality like and especially on the podcast as well like people listen to this leave a review on this podcast mm-hmm. yeah it's helpful yeah, yeah. these totally. people are doing this shit for no cost i mean obviously yeah. there's back end things you wouldn't be doing it for nothing nothing right. but yeah. nonetheless like you're just bringing people that you find meaningful together to be able to mm-hmm. share information that you think has a positive impact on the world yep like you right now on your cell phone <laughs> pressing the five star <laughs> thing and saying like Good. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I was like, good. Yeah. You don't even mean to finish it. Yeah. Just say G. You know, like, you know yeah. what I meant. Yeah. Just make sure you get It'll the five stars. It'll literally take you 15 seconds. Yeah, yeah, totally. You're like, no, I don't have time. Like, shh. Yeah. Jerk. It, well, Jerk. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so true. So basically, order the book and leave a review. Leave Those a review. Two, <laughs> yeah. The two things. And then I, I host a podcast, too, so people listen to that stuff. And yeah. it's a Lime podcast, right? The Lime podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what it is on Instagram. That's the website and all that stuff. We have online program, Line method. Mm. We got all things. All the things. We have an ecosystem. You do. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. do. You'll enter the ecosystem. That's the way to do it. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Yeah. Look forward Bye. To it. Well, that's it, folks. I hope you guys enjoyed that podcast as much as we did. Yeah. Hundred percent, and make sure you go and check out his book. You can get it everywhere that books are sold. Amazon's easy. Yes, Amazon is easy for all. 
And if you guys have yet to check out ButcherBox, which is our brand new partner here at the show, make sure to go to the show link, to the show notes rather, and check out the link for ButcherBox. You know, we have been using them for two years now and we really love their products. We really love their business. We support them with our dollars, literally, yeah. and we hope that you will support them with yours. If you're looking for, you know, healthy, well-raised, um, you know, consciously raised animals that are humanely cared for. And, um, you know, really this is so much of what we believe in here at Be The Wellness is nourishing yourself from all levels. And that really does include having quality sources such as animal products that are, you know, pasture raised, grass fed, grass finished, organic, all that good stuff. Um, it makes a big difference. Yeah. And you can get it conveniently delivered to your door. Yep. Which is which is pretty super epic. Super awesome. Yeah. Yes. It's a it's a pretty good deal. I mean, we used to basically have to buy a half a cow every year and drive to Northern California and put it in freezers <laughs> and do all of this stuff in order to get that. Yeah. And now it just shows up, which is pretty awesome. And we had these ribeyes when the, this last box that showed up, we uh, just literally put salt on these ribeyes and pan fried them. Like it wasn't even anything special and they were amazing. Yeah. Some of the best steak I've had. Honestly, like I was like, I, I haven't been eating a lot of red meat, to be honest, in the last year. And I was like, it just, it was delicious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no two ways about it. Yeah. So yeah. So go down to the link, check out the, um, the offers and the deals and stuff that they've got going on. Cause it always changes. You know, yeah. they've got free beef or no free bacon or sometimes it's sausage and they always throw stuff in there, you know? And so anyway, go down there, check it out, see what they've got going on and get on the train. Yes. And last but certainly not least, we really want to get folks inspired to share the podcast, to leave us your fi a five-star review. You know, this is such an important part. And again, we've said this before, but we do a really bad job of asking for it, encouraging folks. So we are going to be doing a new system where we're going to announce a winner for a, for a giveaway. So if you do any of the following share the podcast if you um leave us a five-star review uh if you what else could they do i guess that's really it that's pretty much it <laughs> that's i mean it. <laughs> there was a point we were considering taking like written reviews via fax but it's just <laughs> it's super cumbersome it is super if you call us on your rotary dial up <laughs> exactly. let us know how you feel <laughs> Yeah. But, you know, if you do either of those things, take a quick screenshot, send it to us at info at Be The Wellness. We are putting your guys, we're compiling the names and we're going to be doing a drawing once a month to give away one of our favorite cookbooks or maybe one of our favorite fitness books. One of our favorites that we've collected over the years that we love and have it shipped directly to you. So make sure to do that. Send it to info at BeTheWellness.com and we'll enter you for that sweepstakes sweepstakes <laughs> like steaks like in the butcher right. box <laughs> right 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 it's all coming together all right guys we'll see you next week bye bye